Rover 200, R8, 1989-99. The R8 Rover 200, sometimes referred to as the MK2 Rover 200, was launched on October 11, 1989. Unlike the MK1, the LOD-based, 200, this model was a five-door hatchback designed to replace the Maestro while the saloon variant, called the 400 series, was effectively the replacement for the previous Rover 200 series when it was launched in April 1990. The 400 had a different nomenclature to the 200 because at the time many saloon versions of compact cars were positioned slightly upmarket from their hatchback siblings, often featuring higher specification and prices, in addition to different names, a notable example being the Ford Orion, the saloon version of the Ford Escort. The Maestro continued alongside the Rover 200 hatchback as a budget option until production finished in December 1994. The 200 also spawned three-door hatchback, coup and convertible versions, while the 400 eventually spawned an estate version. These latter variants were solely Rover-designed and produced products, with no Honda Concerto versions available. Initial plans to sell the coupe version under the MG mark were abandoned, although the five-door hatchback was the most popular and common version. The R8 200 was the first car to be introduced by the newly privatized Rover Group. Once again, the model was designed in collaboration with Honda, who produced the new design for Europe Concerto model, and both models would share production lines at Rover's Long Bridge facility. The 200 and Concerto itself were based on the fourth generation Civic, EC, of which the three door hatchback, QC RX, and Saloon versions were sold in the United Kingdom meaning that Honda had effectively two different saloon models of the same car in the same class. The 200 also saw the introduction of Rover's brand new K-Series family of engines, appearing in 1.4 liters, 1,396 cc, twin-cam 16-valve form. The 1.6 liters, 1,590 cc, version used either a Honda D16A6 SOC or D16A8 dock power plant while the 2.0 liters M series unit from the 800 series followed soon afterwards, 1991, in the sportier versions. Later versions used the Rover T series engine, with limited run turbocharged Rover 220s and Tinkset turbo trams, boast a power output of 200 PS, 147 kilowatts, 197 bhp, as standard. The Rover engine models drove the front wheels via jointly developed Peugeot, Rover R65 gearboxes, 1.4 liter, and Rover PG1 gearboxes for the 1.6 and 2.0 liter versions. From December 1990, the carburetor engine 214S, with a 1.4 engine from the Metro, was added to the range, but discontinued within two years due to EEC emissions requirements. Its gap was filled by the 214i, which featured the 1.4K series unit from the 214C and 214 slip. Also available were two PSA, non-electronically controlled Lucas Cav injection pumps, indirect injection diesel engines, with the choice of naturally aspirated 1.9 liter XUD9 or turbocharged 1.8 XUD7 T engines. They were class leading in their refinement in Peugeot and Citroen installations but less refined in the Rovers. These engines were installed instead of the non-electronically controlled Bosch HPVE direct injection Rovum de Perkins Prima used in the Austin Maestro and Montego, because that engine with its noisy combustion but lower fuel consumption, was deemed too unrefined for the new models. In France and Italy, where demand for diesel cars was high, Honda offered a rebadged 200 turbidsel called the Concerto TD. Despite the Concerto name, this model retained the 200's exterior lighting and trim. The Rover 200 was produced alongside the Maestro, which continued to sell in smaller figures alongside it for the next five years. Because the R8 diesel used Lucas fuel injection rather than Bosch, it is less suitable for vegetable oil fuel, even though the Xude itself is one of the best engines for it. On its launch, the R8 200 was one of the few new designs in the small family car class. For instance, Ford's Escort had been around since 1980, with a facelift in early 1986, 
and Vauxhall's Astra was unchanged from its 1984 launch. Indeed, the only major European competitors that had been around for less than five years were the Peugeot 309, Renault 19 and Fiat Tipo. However, the Escort, Astra and Golf had all been replaced by the start of 1992. On average, up to 110,000 drove or 200 and 400, or 8, models were sold each year, more than half being sold in Britain. The 214 won what car? S 1990 Car of the Year, but was not considered for the 1990 European Car of the Year award as it was not yet available on the required number of European markets for it to be shortlisted. In the autumn of 1993, the 200 received a mild facelift, featuring redesigned front indicator lights, but unlike its 400 sibling, which was also facelifted at the same time, the car did not feature a new grille, which Rover reintroduced on the 1992 R17 facelift of the Rover 800, or new body-colored bumpers. This led to some owners retrofitting the 400's new grille onto the 200. In 1993 Rover finally added the new grille and body-colored bumpers to the 200 range. The addition of more powerful versions of the Rover 200 series, including the two models, saw the demise of the high-performance MG Maestro 2.0 IFA and Turbo models in 1991. A coupe version was launched in late 1992, and among the engine options were the 220 Turbo which was the fastest Rover to be produced at the time, with a top speed of more than 140 miles per hour Rover had originally considered marketing the coupe version of the car as an MG but eventually decided to include it as part of the Rover 200 range. 